This is the first section of chapter two, and this is the product moment correlation coefficient. So you would have come across the uh, PMCC product moment correlation coefficient in year two of applied. And in year two of applied, you'd have been using your calculator to work out the PMCC. And just a reminder, on your calculator, menu six to you enter the data, then press four, and then you write down the value of R. Now here we're actually going to be working out the PMCC manually and the formulas in the formula book. And here's the formula here. So you'll recognize these now SXY, SXX and SYY. So if we were to write the formula out in full, it would look like this. Now, the only other thing to note is that coding does not affect the correlation. Now again, you would have come across coding in um, year one applied, it's the first time you would have come across it, and it does not affect the correlation. So as long as the coding is like this, a linear coding, then the correlation of the data is unaffected once it's been coded. Example one, the number of vehicles uh, X millions and the number of accidents uh, Y thousands in 15 different countries were recorded. The following summary statistics were calculated and a scatter graph of the data is given to the right over here. And we've been given a summary statistics down here. Part A, what we need to do is calculate the PMCC. Now, since we've only got the summary statistics, we don't have the original data, then we have to use the formula. We can't use our calculator. Remember, when we use our calculator, we basically type in the data that we have from a table. There's no table only this summary. So let's write down the formula. We can get this from our formula book. R equals SXY divided by the square root of SXX times by SYY. And so now we just um, plug in the values from the um, summary statistics we've got up here. So for SXY, we want the sum of XY. So that's going to be uh, nine nine one five point three minus the sum of x times the sum of y so that's one seven six point nine times by six seven nine all over n and it tells us here 15 different countries so n is 15 so I'll write that down n is 15 I suppose we could count the number of crosses as well 15 so that's sxy so we now go to the bottom of the formula down here and we'll start with uh, SXX. So um, let's put a bracket in here. SXX is going to be the sum of X squared. So that's 2576.47 minus the sum of X 176.9 and that's going to be squared over N. And then we times that by uh, SYY, so that's going to be the sum of Y squared, 39771, minus the sum of Y, 679 squared over N, 15. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll work out each bit of these on our calculator so that we've got the values of these summary statistics, then we'll work out the final answer. Okay, so what I've done is I've worked out each part and I've written down the exact value that I got on the calculator. So fortunately they've given us fractions. And then if I calculate that, I'll get 0 0.906437. It carries on like that. So I'll round that to three significant figures. So I'll get 0 0.906. And I'll just put three significant figures there. Okay, part B of this question. It says, with reference to your answer to part A and the scatter graph, comment on the suitability of a linear regression model for these data. Now, remember, when we work out the value of R, it tells us about the correlation. And the value of R will be between 1 and minus 1. And the closer it is to 1 and minus 1, the stronger the uh, correlation. As you can see, since R is close to 1, it tells us that we've got like a strong positive correlation. So a linear regression model would be suitable for this data. OK, so I've just summarized that. And basically all this means is, is that you could work out the regression line for this data and you could read off results 
uh, or you could actually predict results using that uh, regression line because of this strong positive correlation here. Obviously, we would need to be careful about trying to pre uh, predict results outside of the range of the values that have been collected. In other words, be careful about trying to extrapolate um, outside of any, any regression line um, that we've worked out using this set of values here. Example two, data collected on the amount of dietary supplement D grams given to a sample of eight cows. Okay, so that looks like it's my value of N there, N is eight, and their milk yield M liters. The data were coded using these codings here. The following summary statistics were obtained. Use the formula for SYY to show that SMM equals 23.66. Now, since it says we need to use the formula for SYY, that's what we're going to start with. So we're not going to calculate um, SMM directly. It may not be possible to calculate SMM correctly because I can see that we don't have the sum of M squared or the sum of M. So we, get, we can't work out directly. So let's start by writing down SYY equals the sum of y squared minus the sum of y all squared over n and now we just do some substitution we've been told what syy is so we'll substitute that in 0.05915 that's going to equal the sum of y squared now y is equal to m over 20 so we can write this as the sum of m over 20 squared so that's just substituting and then minus the sum of y well that's just going to be the sum of m over 20 the sum of m over 20 that's going to be squared and divided by n which is 8. so the rest of this question is just now going to be working out what m is and it's just going to be algebra the rest of this question right so let's carry on down here so we have 0 0.05915 is equal to now we can square this so this will be m squared over 400 so the sum of m squared over 20 squared which is 400 minus so this part here this is basically the same as the sum of m over 20 times by the sum of m over 20. So the sum of m over 20 times by the sum of m over 20. And that's going to be divided by 8. So what we can do here, we can pull the constant to the other side. So um, I'm dividing by uh, 400 or multiplying by 1 over 400. So that can be taken to the other side of the summation sign. So now this becomes 1 over 400 times by the sum of m squared minus. Now we can do a similar type of thing here. So we can bring the uh, 20 or 1 over 20 over to this side of the summation side. So we'll have 1 over 20 times by the sum of m times by... 1 over 20 times by the sum of m, and that's all over 8. Then we can look at the second part of the uh, expression there. So we'll keep this as the 1 over 400 times by the sum of m squared. Now, if we look at this part here, if we multiply these together, so you'll have 1 over 20 times 1 over 20, which is 1 over 400. And then you've got the sum of m times by the sum of m. Well, that's going to be the sum of m squared. So all of this is all algebra at the moment. Still over 8 here. Right, now, what you may notice is this looks a bit like the summary statistic SMM. Now, if we did have SMM, what would it look like? It would look like this the sum of m squared minus the sum of m um, all squared over n. That looks fairly similar to this. If we can take the 400 out, then we can, we can get that, can't we? So if I multiply both sides by 400, then 0 
5915 multiplied by 400 becomes 23.66. And then I'm left with this. The sum of m squared minus the sum of m all squared over 8. Now that's fine because 8 is n. So can you see that it matches up? So basically what I've got here is that SMM equals 23.66. Now it may be that when you get to this point, you may not necessarily spot this. So do watch out for this type of pattern and the summary statistic that you're trying to find. So anyway, we'll highlight that. We've proved it as required. So I suppose I should put as required here. And we'll move on to part B. Part B, it says find the value of the product moment correlation coefficient between D and M. Now the PMCC between D and M would be the same as the PMCC between X and Y because this coding is linear. But we don't have enough information to find the PMCC between X and Y. We'd get the same answer anyway. So we're going to have to use the PMCC between D and M. I think we've got enough information to find that. Now, if we were using X and Y, this is how we would find the PMCC, but we're using D and M. So all I need to do is replace the X with D and the Y with M, they're the things that match up. So this will be R equals S and then DM over the square root of S DD times by S MM. Now let's see what we need to work out. Well, I have SDM, that's here, and I have SMM, that's what I proved in part A. So it's just a matter of now working out what SDD is. Now SDD would be the sum of D squared minus the sum of D all squared over N. Now I've got the sum of D squared, so that's here. So what I'm missing is the sum of d now i'm given the sum of x so i'm going to use the sum of x to work out the sum of d and then square it so the sum of x is the same as doing the sum of d over 2 minus 6 so the sum of d over 2 minus 6 and i know that that is equal to 44. So we need to keep it in mind that what we need to get from here is what the sum of D is. So this sort of needs rearranging so that we can isolate the sum of D. Well, the first thing is we've got this D over two that we sort of want to simplify and it's minus six. I suppose I should put brackets around this. Um, so what we can do is write it like this. We could write this as the sum of half and then in brackets D minus 12. So just think about that. This is the same as this, isn't it? If you take half out of the brackets, half times um, minus 12 is going to be minus 6. So this is equivalent. So that equals 44. Whenever we've got a constant with a summation, we can bring that to the other side. So we can now write this as half the sum of d minus 12 equals 44. Then we'll times both sides by 2. So we'll get the sum of D minus 12 equals 88. Now this is the same as the sum of D minus the sum of 12 equals 88. Now we've pretty much isolated the sum of D. Now we need to think about what does this actually mean? Well, we're adding together eight sets of values. Where does it say? There we go, eight sets of values. So we'd be adding together are eight d's and they're all going to be different values then we're going to be taking away eight lots of 12 so we can rewrite this down here as the sum of d minus eight lots of 12 that's what we're going to be adding on equals 88 so then it's just a matter of um, adding 8 times 12 to 88 and if we do that on our calculators, we get a value of 184. Okay, so now we've found 
the sum of D here, that's 184. So now we can carry on and work out SDD. So SDD is going to be the sum of D squared, which is 4, 5, 9, 2, minus the sum of D, which is 184. That's going to be squared over N, which is 8. And that gives us a value of 360. Now, before I finish this, if you're not sure about these rules for summations here, I'll put a link in the description and probably something up in the corner that gives a link to uh, a core one video that will go through the rules for these summations here in case you're not 100 percent sure why we've factorized things or move values to the other side or exactly what's going on here. But this is covered in core one. So now I'll finish off um, part B up here where I've got a bit more space. So B continued. So now I can work out R, which is going to be SDM, which is what I um, was given there. So that's 90.6. So 90.6 divided by the square root of SDD and SDD we've just worked out here that's 360 times by SMM and that's the 23.66 right so what does that give us for R okay so it's 0.98 one six seven nine and so on like that we'll give it to three significant figures so 0 0.982 three significant figures so we can see that it's a very very strong positive uh correlation between the um amount of dietary supplement that was given to these eight cows and their uh, yield of milk so very very strong positive correlation there so you should now be able to complete exercise 2a on pages 24 to 26 and here's just a quick recap of what we've done